I get more requests for this axe, a review of this finished lever axe than anything else. And so that's what we're gonna be doing today. I have a special guest. We're gonna get perspective from the fresh pea, a girl's perspective on splitting with it, and a man's perspective of splitting with it. So we've got uh, our tire holder set up here. It's recommended or pretty much necessary to have something like this to contain the wood because the way that it levers and it forces wood to the side, you'll constantly be picking up uh, your block. So putting it inside of this is pretty much mandatory. So we have two different models here. We've got the big heavy one made of the cast and then we've got the punch stainless which is a pound lighter. It's really noticeable and this one here has a little bit, is the handle maybe a little bit shorter? Not much similar handles. I requested the wood handles on these. I don't know if they come in a polymer or in wood both. Um, I just saw that there was a wood option so these are all wood handles. So we're going to put these to the test and see how they split against the traditional mall and get to the bottom of it. What do you think? I think it looks crazy. First impressions, it's lightweight which is really nice because I do not split wood as you'll notice here shortly <laughs> you see me swinging this thing but i can definitely i could definitely swing it for a while i could cut enough for a pizza oven's worth oh it's just so untraditional Okay, so what I noticed with the first two strokes, what I wasn't doing right, is I was holding it firm and not allowing it to twist. How this is designed, and I could feel it after doing it a few times, it's designed to go in here and to rotate out and to lever this wood apart, like this here, to force it out. And you have to let it slip through your hand. So it just takes a couple times to, as soon as it comes in contact, is to let go, just loosen your hands up and let it rotate. That's key in its way, in its, uh, what causes it to split like that. So we can see here, everything is pretty well split. It's not really held together, it comes apart easy. You didn't have to swing very hard. It's better than I was expecting, actually. So let's put four more pieces in and use a traditional maul and see really if there's any difference in effort and how they come apart. All right, so we've got four similar pieces here with a traditional eight pound splitting maul. And we'll go around and kind of see, see what the difference is. All right, ready? All right, as a spectator, watching the lever axe versus the traditional, any insight, what did you see? It didn't really look like there was a lot of difference. So I'm just collecting my logs. I've got little ones and big ones because I don't know which ones are easier to split, so I'm just gonna go for it. Ready. Wow. 
Is this painful for you to watch? <laughs> <laughs> don't don't uh, try and tire yourself out, just use good air. Keep working around. Yes! Yeah, you do need to hit it in the right spot. So these are my feathers. Um, there was a lot of bounce, I know. I'm not a wood splitter, so I'm not familiar with what an ax is supposed to feel like, but I've, I've many experiences of cutting wood like this. <laughs> so, so here are a couple pieces from this one, which actually split, um, but not, not great. And I think that's just because I didn't put a lot of force on it. So knowing that and kind of getting used to the swing of it, I think I might do a little harder hit next time and see what I got. Like this thing, it's gonna need some more work. <laughs> I'm gonna go around with a lightweight uh, lever axe and get my impression upon that. Oh, it hurts my hand. Okay. Do not like that. Took way more energy because I had to put so much more force into it. And the reverb, the handle really hurts my hand. It's so bouncy that it just transfers down through the handle and it really hurts my hand. It's, it's, it's I would say that it's even painful. And just, it's, the head's already getting wiggly on it. I also noticed as I was using it, the head was getting looser and looser and looser. You can hear it's all, it's all wiggly there. It's just not fitted very well. And as that works back and forth, it's only going to damage the wooden handle on it. The only thing holding this thing from coming off is this, through the bottom is this piece of ABS, this bash guard on there. Um, I do not like this uh, to split with. I don't like the way it hurts my hands and I don't like that it's coming loose. Not not impressed at all with this. Just so we have an adequate rep representation, I'm going to try this because I haven't split wood for a couple of winters. Well, that works good. <laughs> My impression with this, the sheer weight of this, this call, part called the mall, the mall, the drop force was what actually cracked the wood open and it just seemed much easy, easier. So we have another finished contender, the Hateful Fiskers. Not a splitting mall, but kind of more my size, it's lightweight, and I'm just gonna see what it does. Ooh. <laughs> Dude, I'm loving that. <laughs> Bump the handle down. Down, okay. That is a hateful little fish curse. I was really stoked on it until it smashed me in the face. So, front tooth missing, lip cut really bad. Mm -hmm. Um. Have you looked at it yet? I can't, I'll pass out. I don't have the stomach. Can I see it? Is it yucky? Yeah. 
my grossest selfie ever. So she's sending a picture to our uh, your. My neighbor is a doctor. He's an ER doc, so. He wants Ooh. to see it. He wants to see it. Ooh, Can I see that. the selfie? The selfie. So what did I take away from this whole experience? You know, I I hate doing this. I I, I am not a fanboy for manufacturers, um, but um, the inventor of this act contacted me and really wanted me to take a look at it and review it. And that with uh, all of the requests from you guys about it, I, I went ahead and did it. I am all about innovation and about a guy trying to invent a better way to do something to save time and effort or make a tool safer. I'm all about that and I would have uh, would like to to give a tool like this a glowing recommendation. But the simple matter of the fact is first off, the lightweight version not recommended. Um, I I did not like it. Um, my sister the Fresh P didn't like it. Uh, we'll just, we'll forget that. Let's go to the the heavier model. Does it split wood? Yes, it splits wood. Is it safer to use than a traditional maul? Yes. However, however, comma, I have never really considered a splitting maul to be an unsafe tool. Is it more effective than a splitting maul? No. No, it's it's not. And it is um, kind of strange to use. It, uh, the twisting of the hand, a handle is kind of an awkward thing. And the, the reverb you get through the handle, the vibration when this thing does its flip and smashes onto the top of the round is, to be honest, is quite uncomfortable. Could you split firewood with this? Yes, you could. It, it is an effective splitter. However, you know, the big thing is the cost. $350. Yeah, plus a little bit more uh, with shipping. I just checked it on Amazon and I read, I did some research on this axe or the splitting mall when, uh, when I was uh, getting ready to do this video. And then I would see some people said, oh yeah, well you can get it cheaper uh, directly from the manufacturer. You know, it was like 320, you know, there's no difference. 320, 360, it's outrageous for what it is. I mean, you're getting into the price point where you can buy a custom built, hand forged, handmade handle, handmade leather sheath, splitting mall from John Neiman. You're getting way above what it would cost to buy a Grand Force Brooks, beautiful traditional splitting mall. Again, forged with Swedish steel. I don't see it. It is interesting. It is an elegant and beautiful design. However, at that price point, would I not expect something really, really special? I mean, the fact that the grain orientation is incorrect on this, it's completely sideways, just opposite of what you want. Um, you've got a painted handle that is just simply dipped in. You can see the two-tone variations. There is nothing in here that lends itself to craftsmanship or something special. It's just not. I. I wouldn't fault it for any of those things. I'm not going to fault the painted handle or, or the way it's put together or the way it's built if it's in a reasonable price point. I mean, when I look at this, I'm thinking this should never, never be over a hundred dollars and even approaching a hundred dollars is too much. It's just ridiculously expensive. It's like, it's something that belongs in the Sky Mall, you know, that that shopping magazine that they have on the airplanes that a rich businessman that's got a cabin in Aspen might see as he's flying on a business trip and he orders it uh, because he thinks that it, it's, it, you know, it's just, it's, it's too much. It's just too much for what it was. I do not see it. The sheath, they do come with a sheath, um, is a nice sheath, but you know, it's um, right here. You can see I haven't even used this yet. This is what I haven't even touched. And here's what's going on with the sheath. You know, it's, it, I don't think it's leather. I think it's a synthetic. It's, it's cheap. Um, it's not handmade. It's not, it's just, I'm sorry uh, to say this, but I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. 
just ridiculous for the for the price. Um, you know, I, I'm not a fanboy of manufacturers. I, I'm going to call it like it is. If somebody's going to send me something, this is they're going to expect that I'm going to be true and I'm going to tell it like it is. And this is this has been my experience.